Welcome to Artistic Abandon's instructional video series where we teach you how to teach our paintings. My name is Emily Page and I'll be walking you step by step through breaking down today's painting into understandable stages so that anyone can recreate it. Let's begin. Welcome back. Today we are going to be doing Artistic Abandon's painting, The Blue Window. So we're going to start with our big green handled brush. You're going to take that brush and dip it into the water. Pull it sopping wet out of the water and you're going to mix a little bit of white and yellow together. And I just pull a little bit out from each pile, swirl them around together. And we're going to start painting in our background. I'm going to be getting right up to your pencil lines. It's a little bit of an awkward angle for me, but I'm trying to keep myself out of the way so you can see it. So I give myself relatively clean edges, and then I go in and just start doing X's. And at the top, I'm going to go back in with a little bit of straight yellow. So it's a little darker at the top. They can move back and forth between their straight yellow and the yellow and white combo. Remind them to hold their paint brushes up close to the bristle when they're doing this part and rest their pinky or their hand on the canvas. It's going to help them steady their hands. I remind them that um, it's kind of like writing or drawing on a piece of paper. You drag your hand on the paper. Same concept. They wouldn't try to write or draw with a pencil holding it way far away. Same thing when they're trying to do steady lines and essentially drawing with a paintbrush. When they're doing the big X's, they can back off a little bit. They don't need to choke up on it. So right up close to the window on that right side, I stay relatively light as I get farther out towards the right hand edge of the canvas. I'll get a little bit darker. And I did pre-sketch this on for them. This is one of those ones that is murder to try to teach the drawing aspect of it. So we just go ahead and draw it on there in advance. And I'm staying light underneath my windowsill so that when we add our shadow in, it's visible without us having to get super, super dark. Still doing big sloppy X's. You'll get some people that'll want to do teeny tiny little X's. Just remind them this is we're going for big and loose and sloppy for the stucco here. Get it all the way down to the bottom. So that everything around our window is painted in. And we'll drop that brush in the water, leave it in the water. We're going to switch to the uh, small six, dip that brush into the water, and swirl a little water around into the edge of your straight yellow. We're going to take that down the left hand side of your left hand shutter.
And it's okay if it wobbles a bit. And remember that we're going to be doing these shutters. You can clean things up where you need to. And I soften that edge a little bit on the outside so that it's not too hard. So they're going to start to freak out about these lines. Just remind them that we're going for stucco, which is not a smooth surface. And when we do our shutters, we're assuming that these are old, weathered, wonderful shutters. So you don't have to worry about everything being neat and tidy and perfect. It's okay if things wobble a bit. So you're going to take that shadow all the way along the underside of the windowsill and then on the underside of the second shutter. But they don't put it right under here because that's not cast shadow there. Uh, then I'm going to dip back into my yellow and I'm going to take it in the arch way. right up close to the bristle like you would hold a pencil. And then I'll dip into a little bit of brown and I'm going to take that into my corner up here, that top right corner. And into the very bottom corner here so that it's just a little bit darker. And then I'm going to take a little bit, I'm turning my brush on its edge, and I'm going to take a little bit of brown right next to my shutter. Basically everywhere we did our shadow before, we're going to do it now, but turning the brush on its edge, so using the thin part of the brush. I'm working wet into wet here. By the time they get to this, it'll all pretty much be dry because they're going to work a lot slower. So things will be a little easier. And then I'm going to clean that paintbrush off and swirl some water around into the edge of my black. And we're going to paint in the inside of our window. So here they do need to be a little bit more careful because as you know black is really hard to cover. And having a little bit of extra water in it is really key to helping them get a solid edge. Remind, that, remind them when they see the paint start to break up they need to stop and reload. So I start by doing my entire outline first. and. I'll even change the direction of my painting sometimes so that I have dry canvas to rest my hand against as I go. So I'll go ahead and do the underside of the window up here. And then I'm going to take the whole canvas and I'm going to flip it. And that way I still have dry canvas to rest my hand against. And then I'll have them switch back to the big green handle brush, have them swish around the bottom of the cup, 
make it make noise, dab it on the paper towel, and just switch back to the big brush to fill that whole thing in. And this is generally a pretty good stopping place. This should take you to about an hour or so into the class. I try to give two breaks for the three hour classes, roughly every hour, but sometimes I'll take it a little earlier, a little bit later, depending on how they're doing. Go back to the number six, clean it off, dab it on your paper towel. I'm going to dip into a little bit of white and I'm going to paint in the top of my window ledge, window sill. So I'm not doing the front of it yet, just the top, the surface of it. And I'll take a little bit of brown and kind of smooth it in there underneath. My pot, clean off the brush, dab it on the towel, take a little bit of yellow in the top right part. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit more white. I'm just gonna scrape my brush on the edge of the plate Pick up a little bit more white. I'm going to do the side and the front. And then dip into a little bit more brown. We're going to take a little brown into that edge there. We're going to come all the way along edge, the line that separates the surface from the front of that ledge. And then I'll do two little lines to break up the front of it there. And if they want to take a little bit of extra yellow or anything in there, they can. They don't have to. Just want to make sure there's not a lot of paint on the brush if they do. I like to soften it just a little bit. And then I'm going to dip into my water and clean it off again, dab it on the paper towel, and dip into a little bit more of that burnt sienna. We're going to paint in our base. And then I'll take a tiny little bit of black in this corner. A little bit of black goes a long way. The lighter they press, the easier a time they're going to have blending. Clean that paintbrush off again, dab it on the paper towel, and we're going to start to put the blue in for our windows. So we're going to come right along the edge here. And again, by the time you get to this, the black in the center will be dry because you'll have taken a break already. So you'll be able to rest your hand on the canvas on that side. Again, remember these are old, warped, and weathered shutters, so the lines don't really have to be perfectly straight. So I'm going to flip it upside down since my black is still wet. And again, anytime they want to do that, that's totally fine. Whatever makes it easier for them. Some angles are harder to get to than others. Right, so the right side up again. And just 
fill that whole thing in. And I try to keep my paint strokes going up and down so that it starts to mimic a little bit the direction of the actual boards that compose the shutter. It's going to be streaky. Remind them that it's okay that it's streaky. We actually want them to be streaky so that it starts to mimic the warp and weather of the wood. All right, we'll move on to the other side. Do the next one. Just dry enough that I can still do this side without having to flip it again. Same thing, fill it in, going up and down. dry for a minute while we work on some cracks in our walls. So I'm going to switch to the pointy brush that we haven't used yet. Dip that brush into the water. Always, always, always lots of water in your paint whenever you're using this brush. Remind them not to scrub with it because they will and it'll get destroyed. So I dip it in the water, pull it topping wet out, put a little bit of water around into the edge of my yellow. And I'm going to give myself a very wobbly arch above my arch. So we're going to mimic the stone up there. And do a few lines cutting in and up. So it looks like we've got some cracking. And then I'm going to take some squiggly lines into the wall itself. So it's got that nice old warped, cracky, stucco look. I want to keep this really jagged. Don't get too smooth with it. Let your hand shake. to our number six. Dab it on your paper towel. And we're going to mix a little bit of blue and black together. So it's going to look almost black on the plate. I want it to be pretty dark. And again, because my painting is still very wet, I'm going to flip it upside down here so that I can rest my hand on the canvas. And I'm going to do the edge of the shutter.
there's more inside. Same thing on the other side. Hopefully it's dry enough that I can actually do this. Flip it right side up again. So we need to um, make where our actual planks that hold those shutters together, I'm not sure what those, I guess, cross beams are. Clean off my brush, I'm gonna take, dab it on my paper towel, take a little bit more extra blue, just straight blue this time, and choose a couple spots about a third of the way down, about the width of your paintbrush. a bar across and then another one about two-thirds of the way down again doing a bar about the width of your brush across and it should overlap into your black just a little bit may not be super visible because it's a pretty transparent paint and same thing on the other side Extend out a little ways over onto your yellow. And then I'm going to go back to that black and blue combo, and I'm going to take just a little tiny bit of that right at the edge of those cross beams. So that it looks like they stick out a little bit. And then I'm going to pull down from them without a whole lot of paint on my brush. We're starting to do some warping and weathering again. So again, not a lot of paint on the brush. That's really vital. Don't press down too hard. You're just dragging down. So it starts to look like things are warping. And I'm gonna drop that brush into the water. switch brushes. We're going to let all of this stuff up dry, up here dry just a little bit. We're going to switch to that uh, more frayed out number four. You can use a regular four. It doesn't have to be frayed out, um, but I like it for doing dabbing and stuff. Um, so I'm going to dip that brush into the water, dab on the paper towel, and dip into a little bit of green. And we're going to start to tap in these bushes at the bottom. So actually, so where we are at this point is a good stopping point um, for another break. If they're ahead of schedule, great. You can do a little bit more if you want to. Again, just tapping at the bottom. And I give myself a few little pushes down there. not to make them too uniform and even.
and we're going to start to put some of our little hanging vines at the top. So I start with just little flicks, basically filling in at the top. Changing the direction of them so that they're not too uniform. Take that all the way across the top. Most of the way down that right side as well. Changing up the direction of my paint strokes constantly. And come down to about there. And then we're going to start to do some of those individual tendrils. So it's almost like you're doing X's that don't actually cross over each other. them come down to different lengths. Trying to keep it from getting too uniform. One or two of those actually overlap my shutter too. So it doesn't look like we've stopped because there's a shutter there. They're going to start to get longer and longer over on this right side. We want to fill that in pretty solidly up in that top right corner. And again, I'm getting lots and lots of paint on my brush when I do this. Decreasing my pressure as I get farther down. And then I'm going to mix a little bit of black and green together. We're going to do some dots of that into our bottom two corners. Just tapping again like we did before. And the farther away they get from the corner, the more space there needs, between, be, needs to be between their dots so that it doesn't look like just a hard edge of black. And 
same thing at the top there. We're going to do a few little dabs of black to darken things up up there. Changing the paint strokes direction constantly. And we're going to switch back to our pointy brush. Clean it off and we're going to take a little bit of black and we're just going to underline those slats for the shutters. And again, hopefully, well, not hopefully, it will be by the time you guys get to this. When you're teaching it, it'll be a lot drier so you can get straighter lines. So again, lots of water in your paint. And I'm going to do a few streaks to hint at the boards. They don't need to be lines that go all the way up to the top. You can do three or four or five if you want. It's really up to you. You're just gesturing. You're not doing really obvious solid lines. It's going to be hard for people. They really like to be able to do very solid edges. It's not necessary, though. Oh, you know what we, did? we missed? We actually missed a little bit of green above our face there. So I'm going to go back to that number four that's kind of shredded. Take a little bit of green in there. There we go. And then we're going to clean that same number four off. Dab it on your paper towel. We're going to mix a little bit of white and red together. And I do more red than white. I like this to be a pretty dark pink. I'm going to do a few little dots of pink in this bush down here. I'm thinking maybe it's an azalea or something. And then we're going to do these little blobs for our flowers that are hanging. And they really are literally just blobs. Again, trying to keep the spacing irregular. You need a lot of paint on the brush. Some of the green may end up in it too, that's okay. off, get any of the green out of it that mixed in, and we're going to take a little bit of straight red and just do a dot in the center of all of these hanging guys. And then we'll take a little bit more of our white and red, our hot pink there. I'm going to change brushes for this. I'm going to go back to my pointy brush, clean it off gently, mix a little water from your brush around into some of that pink. We're going to take this 
on the top edge of those support beams. And then a few little streaks of it here and there in your shutters. Just for a little highlight. Doesn't have to be a lot unless you really like it and want to do more. And I think that is everything. All right, so again, final step, of course, will be to sign it, whatever color they want. Just add water to the paint. There you go. And that is Blue Window. For a list of supplies or for more information on licensing artistic abandons paintings to teach in your own home or classroom, you can visit www.artisticabandon.com.